Hey everyone, this video is brought to you today by my friends at Element, which is hands down my favorite way to get electrolytes without any sugar, gluten, or anything you don't need. I started drinking this stuff back in the pandemic, summertime of 2020. I was training a lot in the sun and I was getting cramps all the time. It was a complete game changer for my hydration, so much so that I make it a regular part of my routine now. Element is terrific if you like to train fasted in the mornings, just like I do with my cardio sessions. It's gonna help replenish your electrolytes quickly and get you hydrated and feeling good for those morning sessions. It also tastes awesome. Again, without any artificial ingredients, raspberry salt is absolutely my favorite, but it's actually kind of hard to choose because there's so many great flavors. Element has put together a sweet deal for you to get some free drink sample packs where you only need to cover shipping costs. So please head over to drinkelement.com. That is L-M-N-T forward slash Marcus Philly to pick up yours or click the link in the description below. I think I got an idea. I, yeah, I'm going to do 30 minutes of cardio today. No, wait, I'm going to do it today and tomorrow. I'm just going to do it for 30 days. Yeah, let's see what happens. Hey, what's going on everyone? Marcus Philly here with Functional Bodybuilding. What happens when you do 30 minutes of cardio every day for a month? Will you lose your gains or build a monster aerobic base? Stick around and I'm gonna show you exactly what happened to me. And I'll also share some highly effective and lovable cardio formats for you to go try right now. So about a month ago, I set out to complete 30 minutes of cardio every morning as an experiment. I didn't want it to be complicated and I didn't wanna to put too much energy into planning. See, normally I would just go for like a 30 minute brisk walk, but with a short morning window combined with dad duty, I just couldn't leave the house. Furthermore, I wanted to give myself the best chance at consistency. And I knew that without some variety, I might get bored of just walking on the treadmill. So I put my cardio equipment in the backyard and I set my 30 minute timer and did something new just about every single day. Thankfully, because of my eight years of competitive CrossFit training had exposed me to countless cyclical cardio formats that I have stored deep in my brain. I pulled all of those. I went into deep into my cardio Rolodex of training and I just went to work. I used various intervals, various tools, lots of machines, sometimes body weight drills, and I didn't miss a single day. Now keep in mind, I'm still lifting weights four to five days a week and I already go ahead and ride my mountain bike about one to two days per week before any of this cardio stuff got added into the mix. So I'm already getting a healthy dose of movement into my daily life, into my weekly balance. But I did want to try this out because at different points in my life, different time periods, I've been more physically active than I am right now. Before kids and before my business got rolling, it was easier to dedicate more hours to movement. And I know that when the intensity of my movement is dialed in correctly and it doesn't crush me, more movement always feels better. And this is the primary reason I'm sharing this with you today. See, cardio can help you with your performance and body composition for sure. But for so many people, adding just a little bit more movement in your day can help you feel amazing, give you more energy, better health, and you don't have to hate every single second of it. So I set out to create that feeling in my current life through moderate cardio efforts each day dedicating 30 minutes to cardio with my sustainable plus low complexity plus cyclical recipe. And I wanted to see if I can accomplish this in my backyard at the start of each day before my kiddos woke up from a deep sleep. So here's what I did. The recipe started at 6.30 a.m. every day after my coffee and my sauna, but no breakfast. I usually eat that breakfast around 8 or 9 a.m. Some days the work rest intervals were short and some days they were long. And some days it was just continuous movement for 30 minutes. And here's what happened. My energy started to increase as well as my mood. My digestion got better and my energy utilization from food improved. I increased my caloric output and therefore my caloric intake so that I didn't lose any weight but got to enjoy a little bit more food and also process my food more rapidly, meaning it didn't sit in my stomach for long periods of time. I saw my HRV, my heart rate variability on my fitness device 
increase its average significantly over the course of, of those 30 days, which is a sign of great recovery as well as overall fitness. So here I am, totally hooked on my 30 minutes of cardio every single day. A few more observations that I made. As the mo month went on, I found myself wanting to push my intensity more and raise my rate of perceived exertion. So I started to play around with adding more eccentric contractions like GHD sit-ups and burpees into my cardio mix, and the results were also mixed. See, if I did too many burpees, GHD sit-ups, things like that, my shoulders started to hurt and my body started to hurt, and I did not recover as well. Initially, I didn't adjust my caloric intake, and I just stayed around the same consumption as I had been prior to this experiment. About a week and a half to two weeks in, my appetite really kicked in, and I was clearly in a caloric deficit or undernourished. This resulted in about a week of uncontrollable eating days where I was eating upwards of 5,000 calories a day, and I was still feeling hungry. So this prompted me to adjust my intake, my numbers, my averages, and get back into a better balance. At some point, should I need to stop this cardio experiment for some reason, I'll likely need to adjust my numbers back down so that I can stay in energy balance and keep the same body weight and the same body composition that I have now. So this is a great time to review the cardio recipe. What is the recipe that makes cardio work the best? These three principles lead to better consistency, ability to recover, avoidance of burnout, and positive health performance and aesthetic outcomes. Here they are. Number one, sustainable. Number two, low complexity. And number three, cyclical. Let's figure out what that actually means. Sustainable. So within a given time domain, you can perform the task at a consistent, repeatable effort without seeing your performance decline. So the example is you're going to run 400 meters at your two mile pace. You're going to rest and repeat it for a number of repetitions or sets and not see that pace decline. Next up, low complexity. How difficult a particular movement is for you to complete. So this takes into account both your motor control, which is a brain driven trait and your contractile capacity, which is more a product of your bones, muscles, soft tissues that support the exercise. Lastly, cyclical. This is using methods that occur in cycles and are typically more simple and lower in muscle tension. It helps athletes learn how to coordinate the muscles, their heart and their lungs all at the same time. In last week's video and my previous video on cardio, I talked about these very important concepts that make for the ideal approach to cardio. By following this format, you can do more cardio, not burn yourself out. So check the link that you see on the screen right now. Look, if you haven't loved cardio in the past, you're not sure where to get started, I'm gonna show you some workouts that are gonna help you get the same or better benefits from your typical slog on the treadmill. But the variety is gonna help you break it up and it's gonna give your joints some rest too. Remember, these sessions should feel good and you can stay at or below seven out of 10 on your effort level or your rate of perceived exertion for best results. In other words, get your sweat on, feel like you did some work, but still be able to tackle your day at the end of it. Here are five simple and effective ways to go about getting in your cardio. For simplicity, I'm gonna be sticking to the assault fitness tools that I have. I've got the air assault bike and the air assault runner. In my experience, most functional fitness facilities and even big box gyms have bikes and a place to run, be it a treadmill, a street, a field around the block. Add in a body weight movement or two, a jump rope, and we have lots of combinations that we can use. Furthermore, if you don't have access to these special tools, then you can get creative with any other cardio tool that you have and just substitute them in for what you're seeing me do on the screen now. In each example that I'm about to show, the goal is to build cyclical, sustainable, and low complexity cardio formats that you can fit inside a 30 minute window. In some examples, in order to provide you with a variety and different approaches, the prescription doesn't always neatly fit into that 30 minute time domain. For those specific workouts, uh, number two and number four that you're gonna see today, I've provided some ranges of sets that you can choose, the total amount of work that's gonna help you stay in that closest to 30 minute time frame. All right, let's look at workout format number one, the monostructural. You're gonna use a single tool and you're just gonna break it up into intervals. The first one you're seeing me do is assault bike intervals for 60 seconds. 
and then resting for 30 seconds times 20 sets. That gets you to 30 minutes. The important thing here is that you realize for 60 seconds on the assault bike, you are going to need to hold a specific pace that for you is sustainable. I can't give you that number. I can't tell you how many RPMs or what wattage to work at. You have to figure that out for yourself. So for 60 seconds of work and 30 seconds of rest times 20 rounds, what do you need to do in order to stay sustainable? Alternatively, you could do the same on a structural format and just change the interval of length. You could do 30 sets of 30 seconds of a run and 30 seconds of a rest. Now, if it's only 30 seconds of a run versus 60 seconds of an assault bike, maybe you're gonna be able to give a little bit more effort in the 30 second interval than on the 60 second interval. This is how you start to play with your rate of perceived exertion, but still fall within the guidelines of sustainable. What I love about using machines like the Assault Air Runner and the bike is that there's very, very objective data right on the screen in front of you. So you can always aim for consistent output, whether you're on the bike or the runner. You can see, wow, I'm getting the same number of calories or I'm holding the same wattage or the same RPM. Again, note that for the longer sets, 60 seconds versus 30 seconds, you're gonna call for a slightly lower rate of perceived exertion. I've actually put that into the notes here. So instead of running at seven out of 10, you might run out of eight out of 10 as the time domain shifts. All right, workout format number two, this is the couplets. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna perform four to five continuous rounds of running and double unders. 200 meter run, 30 double unders. Once you finish those four to five rounds continuously, you take a two minute break and then you start the second couplet, which is the same four to five rounds However, this time you're riding the bike and performing something called a sprawl. After those four to five rounds, you're gonna rest two minutes and then go back to the start and repeat the whole thing again. Now, ideally we're fitting this into a 30 minute window. So maybe you need to opt for only doing four rounds of each, or if you're moving at a little bit faster clip, but you're still sustainable, then you can go with five rounds per couplet. Now this example of couplets is a lot more complex than just the monostructural one I showed before. So by mixing in multiple movements and also extending the length of each set to four to five rounds, it's gonna demand that you have better command of your aerobic pacing ability. So I encourage you to start a bit slower than you think you should. If you're feeling good, you can pick up things on the second time through, that would be ideal. I don't want you to start too fast and then slowly start to die off towards the end, which would be defined as unsustainable training. Okay, workout format number three, I call this the volume increasing AMRAPs. So you're gonna perform an eight minute AMRAP, which means as many reps as possible or many rounds as possible. But recall that we're doing sustainable cardio. So you're not actually gonna try and get as many rounds as you can. It's as many rounds as you can within the definition of sustainability or aerobic work. So dial your rate of perceived exertion back to seven out of 10 and get to work on these. The first round, you're gonna do eight calories on the bike, eight calories on the runner, eight air squats, and continue to cycle through that triplet of movements until eight minutes expires. Now I say calories because that's a unit of measurement on the assault fitness tools. I like using it because it's a nice round number and I can match it with something like a bodyweight exercise like air squats. If you're running in a location or on a device that doesn't have calories to count, then you can sub in a hundred meter run for eight calories. And that's about the same amount or comparable distance on a treadmill that you might have access to. Now, after that eight minute AMRAP, you are gonna rest two minutes and you are gonna move on to a second eight minute AMRAP. Only this time, instead of doing eight repetitions of calories and air squats, you're gonna bump it up to 10. You'll do that eight minute AMRAP with now a new number, 10, 10, 10, then take another two minute rest. And finally complete your final eight minute AMRAP where now the repetitions or the volume increases yet again to 12, 12, and 12. Now, just like the first example with these eight minute AMRAPs, we're going back to a fixed time domain. This time frame at eight minutes is certainly longer than the 30 to 60 second monostructural ones I showed first. And it's therefore gonna mean you're gonna go a lot slower with your pacing in order to stay sustainable. 
The variation element here is that with each repeated eight minute cycle, you're gonna be increasing the amount of work you do for each of the movements, eight reps, 10 reps, 12 reps. This is gonna teach you how to stay at a fixed level of effort while performing different lengths of work. Cardio is a skill you have to develop and these formats are hopefully gonna teach you something different in each format about how to manage yourself in cardio so that you can stop hating it and you can start loving it. Okay, workout number four, I'm calling this the descending monostructural with isometric core format. This one you're gonna perform anywhere from five to six sets of the following. You're gonna run 400 meters, then you're gonna do an active rest in the plank position for 40 seconds. Then you're gonna run 200 meters, active plank for 30 seconds, and finally run 100 meters with an active plank for 20 seconds. Once you've completed the run plank, run plank, run plank, you get to take a long rest. That long rest is anywhere from a minute and a half to two minutes. With these descending distances or workout output prescriptions are a great way to learn the different gears that you have within your aerobic system. See, the longer distance are gonna mean moving slightly slower. And then as the distances get shorter, that means you can start to move faster, but you can still stay aerobic and sustainable while moving faster. Lastly, breaking this up with isometric moves like a plank is a way to build in some activity to your rest periods that hopefully are not so challenging that you can't recover yourself in between efforts on the runner. So again, pay attention to the rate of perceived exertion and how that increases from 400 meters to 200 meters to 100 meters. And each time through, you're gonna go back, slow it down, speed it up, speed it up, rest, repeat, slow it down, speed it up, speed it up. That's the goal and that's the skill. You're learning how to use your gears. Okay, the final format that I'm giving you is called Round the World. This is a 30 minute continuous cycle of movement. There's no rest periods. So you need to start thinking, how fast can I move and continue at this pace for a long time? You're gonna cycle through five stations and I encourage you to get creative with what these five stations are. The ones you're seeing me do are bike, for a minute, crawling for a minute, running for a minute, jumping rope for a minute, and finally holding an isometric, the side plank for a minute. Now, because we're in this 30 minute sustained effort time domain, and in the spirit of looking at all of our aerobic sessions as repeatable and sustainable, we need to perform this at an effort that you think you could sustain for two to three times as long like 60 to 90 minutes straight. So pick a pace that feels doable for an hour or more, and that should be your pace for the day. You wanna probably think I can hold a conversation with somebody at most points during this format and it wouldn't feel uncomfortable. Now, if you wanna go give these a try with a couple other fun workouts, be sure to click the link in the description below and get my free cardio guide. Also, don't forget to go get your free pack, sample pack of Element by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time. And as always, if you have questions or if you have feedback for me, drop them in the comments below. I love to engage with you all. Take care. All right.